All right, here it is, guys. Part two of my business tech tip series on Inbox Zero. And if you haven't seen the first part, I encourage you to go back to the first part because I explain what Inbox Zero is. I give you the five parts of what Inbox Zero, you know, the five actions you should take. And then this video is actually going to go into how I actually achieve some of that on my own. And as I said in the first video, my inbox is at zero. I wouldn't lie to you. Okay, everybody, now see, look, I'll show you. Here is my inbox, and here it is. What a productive day. Here, I'll even go on the other. Nothing left to read. Well played. Enjoy your empty inbox. Such bliss. Okay, so I, I've, I've, bri I've briefly talked about the five different concepts, and I would, I would encourage you, if you really are enjoying understanding and, and, and diving into this topic in Inbox Zero, please check all the references down below. There's a lot of different resources. There are plugins for your uh, Gmail. There are different aspects of Inbox Zero that a lot of folks really get into. I try to keep it as simple as I can. I've, I've never really done much than some of the concepts I'm about to explain, but I think the next part of this that I want to get into is what tools or what things in the in the philosophy in the in the scope of inbox zero do i follow and and how i think that can really help you so let's dive into that the first thing i try to do at times is i is i definitely try to turn off my mail client or at least in some aspects i try to make it so that when i get those little emails the little notification that pulls up at the bottom that says hey you just got a new email that that is minimized, right? And the reason I, I say this is this, not everybody can just turn off your email client. Not everybody, uh, not even for me at times, I feel like I can do that. But what I can do is, is if I've done this correctly, I can minimize the amount of times that that comes up and distracts me. If I'm in the middle of doing something that's really important, nothing kills progress like an email notification down at the bottom of the screen. I've seen lots of people get emails and say, oh, I've been bogged down with emails because I was trying to get this thing done, but then I got this email from somebody and that became more important. Why? Why did they become more important? Because someone got on their keyboard and put your email address in there? That's, that's crazy. That's, that's absolutely crazy to me that other folks can interrupt your day. It's like driving down the road and somebody's flagging you down you have to stop and talk to them i'm trying to go somewhere why should i talk to this person on the side of the road and ultimately that person could be someone that you know or that you don't know that's the problem with email notification that's the reason why turning off your mail client or at least minimizing the amount of times that that mail client can distract you is important when it comes to inbox zero it actually does help you save time and Ultimately, in the end, you could spend more time focused on the things you need to get done at that time. And when you need to go back to mail, you check it. And when you check your mail, it's not overwhelming because it's not like I have hundreds of emails and I have to figure out which ones I need to follow up on and which ones I'm looking at and all that stuff. You've, you've done it. Okay, so the next thing I would encourage people to do, and this is something I do quite often, um, in, in inbox zero because it does get frustrating and at times um, I, I get lazy just like anybody else um, it's hard to stay on top of things when it comes to staying on top of, of emails and keeping it at zero because you're so bombarded with emails but trust me you can get there and the way you get there at least initially is to go on email amnesia Email amnesia is basically just taking all the emails that are in your inbox currently. I don't care how many there are. I really don't. It could be 10 emails. It could be 10,000 e emails. It really doesn't matter. Creating a folder in your inbox or in your mail client that says amnesia or says uh, archive or says whatever it is you want it to say. Put the current date if you want. Something that could be significant for you to understand. At this particular moment, I no longer want to have emails bother me. I don't need these emails in my inbox. I'm going to put them somewhere else. So you take all those emails and you put them in that, that folder. Email is smart. You can always do a search 
over your folders in your inbox, uh, or in your mailbox, I'm sorry, or you can always go back to them. You could, you could even put them back in your inbox if you wanted later. Email amnesia is important because in order to achieve inbox zero, and in order to actually feel the benefits of it, you have to start somewhere. So I would, I would highly encourage you, if you want to adopt inbox zero, start with email amnesia. Put all your email in your inbox in a folder and say, that's, that's it. Today is the day I start. That's how I started when I started this process. And I've actually done that many times before. For example, if I go on a, lo a long vacation or even, you know, say it's a, 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 a couple of days, I will take all the emails that I got in that day. I'll spend five minutes kind of reading through some of the ones, looking at who they're from, and then the rest I'll put on amnesia. I'll just say, hey, look, I've been on vacation. Um, I don't have time for your emails, right? The, the time has been passed. Or in the end, when you think about it, if you went on amnesia, right? Say you, you have all these emails that you didn't look at. At some point in time, maybe you do have time for more email. So you can go back to that folder. Or in addition, if there are very urgent items, if there are things you really needed to follow up on, those things will come back up. Someone will respond to an email that they sent and said, hey, did you get this? Hey, do you have an answer for me? That's when you can actually respond to those things. That's when you can say, oh, okay, look, I've been away for vacation for four days, for a week, for however long, and I haven't been able to get to all my emails because I was on amnesia, right? I forgot about those. Um, and you're likely to for someone to understand because honestly, everybody's in this game of chasing emails. There are many times that you would send an email to someone and they didn't get it. Oh, did you get my email? Oh, I didn't get it. Or I, I saw it. I saw it from you briefly. Didn't have time to really read it. You don't get on someone because they didn't get your email. Same thing with email amnesia. You go on amnesia, tell people, hey, look, uh, I was on vacation. I came back last week. Um, I, didn't get, I didn't get your email. Sorry. Next thing I want to talk about is this. If you're not able to do either one of those things, right, and you really need to figure this out, you need to get through inbox and get to inbox zero, you need to schedule breaks. There needs to be a stream of consciousness that says, look, at this particular time, I am not going to stress out about what's in the inbox. I'm not going to look at it. I'm not going to go through anything. And in this case, uh, my male client's always on because I've not perfected inbox zero. I've made it very efficient so that the notifications don't show up all the time. And when they do show up, I've almost trained myself to automatically think of what I should do with that email. And if I come to a solution on, Hey, that's what I'm going to do with my email. When I get to it, I just ignore the notification and say, yep, it's not urgent. Don't need to worry about it. Uh, I'm going to keep going on with my day. And so you need to have breaks where you're not thinking about what email is coming in. What's the next thing that's going to take over my day, right? Schedule those breaks, take those breaks so that you can get other things done so that you can attack your inbox with um, precision so that you can, you know, be in this place where eventually you get to zero. That's something else that's also very good as a tool as far as getting to inbox zero, being able to do those things and uh, being able to move on. Okay, so the next one is something that I know pretty much any inbox zero purist is doing and that is setting up email filtering. Now, I know for a lot of folks, this seems like an arduous task. It may seem like something, hey, I gotta go to some type of school to understand or learn. That is not the case. There are a lot of creators out there that use email filtering, can show you how that's done. I'm, I'm gonna post a link to actually one of the, one of, a, one of many resources that I found where this person actually tells you why he's adopt inbox zero, goes into his Gmail and actually implements certain aspects of this. And he sets up email filters. I use filters all the time. And why I use filters is maybe different than maybe some other folks when it comes to inbox zero, but ultimately the concept is still the same. And that's this, you don't want emails 
that could take away from your attention to ever reach your inbox. You want those emails to be filtered out before, they even notif before you're even notified. And the reason you want that is so that when you have time to go to your inbox and you can look at those emails at, a at that time, that you're not distracted by the notifications. So I like to set up filters for certain groups of people, for certain activities or things that happen, like I have appointments and I have notifications for those appointments that come in. Those notifications I don't need right away. So I have them filtered to a folder automatically. And it's almost like a mini inbox of sorts. So when I go to mail, I check those folders and I actually have them pinned as favorites on the side and I can see those inboxes. And I could say, hey, there's five new emails because I have five new appointments. Let me check those appointments out. And now I don't have to troll through all of my emails to automatically switch between, hey, this is an appointment. This guy wants an answer to this. Oh, another appointment. Oh, this guy wants me to go and visit this website. You know, those types of things don't happen because now I have them already filtered out and they're all in the same stream of consciousness. And I can say, okay, I'm thinking about scheduling and all of my appointments. I can look at all the appointments all at once, get all, this, all of those things scheduled. And in the end, they're already deferred or already archived because they're in a folder. That's something that is very valuable in Inbox Zero because if you can tackle your inbox through filters and you can filter out almost everything, achieving Inbox Zero every day doesn't seem like such an arduous task because now most of your emails fall into categories of of consciousness that you can sort out. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about is something that I do a lot, and that is on a frequent basis, I am very diligent about unsubscribing from unwanted subscription emails. And this may happen for various reasons. It may happen because, hey, you're on one mailing list and that mailing list gets shared with another company. Or you're searching for certain things and you accidentally sign up for some mail subscription and you start getting these emails flooding your inbox or you create a new account for a certain type of product or service and they want to send you marketing emails and you automatically get added to that list so what you should do is you should defer unsubscribing to those or you should actually do the unsubscription at that time but but make it a make it a, a fun exercise make it an activity that is something that you know is beneficial. It can be really difficult to unsubscribe. Sometimes you click the unsubscribe button and you have to fill out the form that says, hey, I didn't want these emails anymore and give feedback. Sometimes you have to change email preferences and that gets to be frustrating and annoying as well. Delegating that or deferring that, I'm sorry, to another time and then going back and doing it later is something that I find myself doing often because ultimately in the end, I know I'm going to be saving myself a lot of stress and a lot of headache because I've unsubscribed from these unwanted, unnecessary emails flooding my inbox. And if it is something that you actually do want, then take, take my advice and set up a filter and then you could just filter those out so that they never reach your inbox in the first place and you can go back to those when you're ready to go to those. If you commit the time and the resources and the energy to inbox zero, you start to develop these habits where you're like, oh, but this is still really important to me. I wanna keep that. So maybe I should just filter that out so that I can come back to it and it doesn't interrupt my stream of consciousness of incoming emails. Because the concept of inbox zero is pretty simple and that's things that come into your inbox are new things to you. And ultimately you need to carry on the conversation if there is a conversation that we had, or you need to actually take action on what it is you've received. You aren't gonna have enough time in the day to look at every email in your inbox and use the same weight or same importance to them. And that's the, that's the reason Inbox Zero is so important because once you start getting in, emails in your inbox after you've set up these filters, after you've unsubscribed from all these messages, you will only get messages that are relevant to you at that time and that you can take action on right away. The feeling of having an empty inbox is something I can't replace, it's something that I really do enjoy. I, I enjoy getting to inbox zero and seeing no emails in my inbox, knowing that my life is either organized, right? Because nothing is ever really done. 
my life is organized and I'm able to not stress out about the fact that there are a bunch of emails to take up my attention when I get new emails that come in and it requires my attention to look at. So that's what I have for today. Re really enjoyed going down this trek, explaining some of these things. Check out the original video that Merlin Mann had on, it, on uh, YouTube here. It's really old, but it's very relevant to this time and, and you will find a lot of value in it. It's about an hour long, but the first half hour is where he really tackles this, this subject. The second half hour is more question and answer. And I did find some of the questions and some of the answers that he took, uh, the approaches that he took uh, to be insightful as well. So with that, please put it in the comment section below. Let me know if this is something that you find value in that, hey, I want to try to get to inbox zero. I'm going to do it today. Or if you think I'm actually crazy, go ahead and put that in the description too, or in the, in the comment section of this video as well. Say, I'm crazy. That's never going to happen. And here's a challenge. And here's why I would love to have a discussion about those things. I'd love to try to help you tackle that. If you think that inbox zero is something that may be of some use to you, but you think it's impossible, love to spend some time talking to you about it. Email is a communication tool. I'm never going to be good at it. No one's ever perfect at email. Just something to think about as you get into this, that, that inbox zero is, sub, is an idea or a thought that allows you to put yourself in a space where you don't have to stress out about, did I miss something? You didn't miss anything because it's empty. Right? Or because there are lots of liberties when it comes to email and those liberties are unrealized until you have an empty inbox and you realize, oh, I don't really have anything that's that important that needs to stay in the inbox. I know I've talked a lot on this. I tried to keep it interesting, show you some different things, uh, but please, yes, please interact with me. Please check out different, different resources, like I said, down below and please visit my website. I'm KenRoss.com and until I see you next time, I'll see you around.